How's it going, Betsy? Uh, you're on mute. Usually it's the other way around that I have <laughs> forgotten to mute myself and I'm <laughs> playing toothless Gaelic goat herds in the background or something like that. So I get it. Yep. We are new to this. So. Yep, I totally understand. Uh, looks like uh, looks like you guys are still sharing your screen. I yeah, that, that's to, me. I keep wanting Sorry. to push buttons and I'm like, nope, that's not my screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a different configuration than I'm used to. I guess I have. Hello, Jeff. Hello. Sorry, I was having trouble getting logged on there. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> Looks like we have John. Hello, John. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I don't know if you remember we were on a panel uh, last year, maybe together. We yeah, yeah, we were. Good to see you again. You too. You too. Uh, I believe you were. You are in the business of doing posters. Yes. Yeah. We do. Uh, Movie posters for the guild. Me and my buddy Jeremy. Excellent. That was more a check on my uh, impending, uh, you know, senileness than anything else. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yay, I still have a memory. Huzzah. It's good <laughs> to see everybody. Hi, Betsy. I don't know if we've met. I I don't think so. Yeah. And Jeff, Jeff, I know. How's it going? Yeah. Good. Good to see you again. You too. So, uh, all right. I, I was just going to say, so we are live on Facebook and YouTube. And of course, we have our Zoom participants. Um, so, technically, we start at 3 30. So, we should give it another couple of seconds for people to uh, roll in, I guess. Um, are we, are we, uh, short, uh, Anne Elizabeth? We are short and you're right. We are short in Elizabeth. <laughs> so uh, we will obviously wait for her. I've been teaching, <clears throat> excuse me teaching online for the last couple of weeks. So I'm getting very interested in people's backgrounds. Jeff, <laughs> <you have to fight. laughs> that's left over from me teaching this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> no nice. cats or dogs though, right? What's that? No cats, dogs, or cockatiels? In your um, I have two cats, but, but the studio is separate from the house. So oh. they're in the house right now where it's cooler. <laughs> ah. That's cool. Yeah. My, uh, my background is fairly boring. Kind of wish now I put my bookshelf behind my desk and then you guys would have a more interesting <laughs> view. Well, you could actually, you know, on Zoom, you can do Mount Vesuvius erupting in the background and we wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They haven't quite perfected that yet, though. That's the problem. So if you move anywhere, then you're kind of moving in and out of your own background and kind of breaking it up. And yeah, so it's a little disconcerting. Aren't hmm? we talking about a style of one's own here? I mean, that's true. <laughs> you can I suppose I could I could put up like one of my one of my characters and put it behind me or something like that. That would uh, maybe I, I maybe I need to rethink this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so, so we don't have a Elizabeth yet, but uh, we are I looking on getting. You do. you do. I'm an Elizabeth, but oh, well. <laughs> yeah. We, we, do not confuse the issue. <laughs> we don't have Elizabeth Legged yet, uh, but uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, and we will. She will join when she's able.
So this is uh, Bubonicon 2020, a style of your own, developing your signature art style. Uh, and today our moderator is Chaz Kemp. So Chaz, take it away. Hello, uh, I'm Chaz Kemp. I am an illustrator from Denver, Colorado, or at least very close to Denver. If you don't live in Colorado, then it doesn't really actually matter. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, but I do a lot of book covers, magazine covers, um, and, uh, posters and things like that for conventions. And, uh, speaking of which I will be the artist guest of honor for Bubonicon, uh, next year or whenever we have it in person. So I'm going to go around and let you guys introduce yourselves. Uh, so Betsy, we will start with you. Um, Betsy James. I'm uh, actually more known now as a writer than an illustrator, writer and illustrator for many years now. Uh, my most recent novel, Road Souls, um, was one of five finalists for the World Fantasy Award a couple of years ago. So um, I started out as an illustrator and I've probably done every form of editorial illustration there is at this point including some comics, uh, generally more um, editorial and literary though. So. Excellent. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Jeff. Um, I'm an artist who works in a lot of different mediums. Um, I, my two big ones right now are comics and theater, mm -hmm. um, but I do a lot of other things too. And uh, I'm, I'm the hostile witness for the panel. I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't really have a style of my own. I do. A, I am a chameleon because that makes the most sense with the way I work. Um, and uh, let's see, I have an Olympic gold medal in art, which sounds absurd, but is actually real. <laughs> All right. I maybe not in this. Maybe not necessarily this particular panel, but. <laughs> that, that begs some questions, I will say. Uh, John, how about you? Hi, I'm uh, John Sanchez. I am a local artist here in Albuquerque. I'm an illustrator, uh, screen printer. Uh, started out doing gig posters for bands, and that's how we got into screen printing. And we've been doing movie posters for the Guild Cinema here in Albuquerque for about the past maybe seven or eight years, I think. So yeah, we do we do that as well, and I'm I'm uh, currently uh, working on a on a graphic novel. So I'm just that's going slowly but surely. So that's something new. But yeah, but primarily an illustrator. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, um, let's uh, let's dive into it at some point uh, for for the audience at home. Ah, oh, I, I see signs that we may in fact have an Elizabeth Leggett. <laughs> <laughs> I love tech. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> so uh, very fortunately and good timing on your part, we are to your introduction to Ooh. our virtual audience. So please Hi. take it away. Hi, I'm uh, Elizabeth Leggett. I am a cover artist for science fiction fantasy novels. Um, I do gallery shows on occasion if I'm really, really lucky. Uh, and my particular passion is Ray Bradbury at the Mont. Excellent. All right, guys. Uh, well, uh, welcome to all of you. And I want to throw a quick shout out to Bubonicon itself for soldiering on through the plague, as it were, to... Uh, to basically highlight what we do to a world that is... Um, yeah, to a world that could use a little bit of sunshine. So, um, so here we are. Um, so let's get to the first question. This is, of course, a, a, the panel on a style of your own, developing your signature art style. And I'll just go ahead and read the uh, the blurb as it would have appeared in the program guide. So, what does it mean to have a signature art style? Is it better to be distinctive or to be a chameleon when it comes to comic art? Panelists give insight into what it truly means to have a style of your own. Uh, I'm going to open it up to be about more than just comic art and just art in general. Um, and so my first question, and I will start with Betsy, um, is, is it better to be just distinctive 
or to be a chameleon when it comes to your art? Um, well, as probably Jeff could tell us, sometimes you're forced into being a chameleon um, by the rent usually, but um, <laughs> or an art director, but <clears throat> I thank you, Chaz, because I was wondering why comic art would be separated from art, from art as, as a place for a person to manifest and develop and explore who they are and who the world is and, and so on, um, which is necessarily unique um, rather than <laughs> doing the artistic equivalent of, you know, oh, I I just can't be happy unless I look like Jennifer Aniston. And so I'll get plastic surgery to look like somebody that I'm not. So um, yeah, does that at least yeah. kick the question on a little bit? I'm on the I'm on the unique side, but I don't I've never really thought about it. I've never I've just okay. drawn like myself. So Excellent. Okay. Well, hey, there, 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 there is an audience for that as well. Um, Jeff, how about your take as as the hostile witness? <laughs> um, well, uh, can I show a few things and talk about it? Um, well, uh, if you if you are if you are very brief, I suppose you can. Yeah, there's just a few pictures here. Um, oh, I guess I can't do screen sharing, so. <laughs> Do you have something physical that you can show? Just hold up to your camera. Um, mm, no, not really. <laughs> Sorry, I just fixed that. I think that was a setting on my part, so you should be able oh, to share. Okay. Um, this was just a few samples. Um, mm -hmm. This is a couple of pages from comics. The first is uh, called Grace. The second is Forever All, um, and it's a story about when the the world being on the on the back of four elephants on the back of a turtle. It's about what what ha what happens when one of the elephants trips. <laughs> um, here's Captain Bambo, which is just a lot of fun. Uh, this is from uh, Peeplings, which is a graphic novel about autism and where special education came from. These are gallery pieces. Um, the one on the left is uh, a series of left-handed portraits of people reading. And the other is uh, called Family Portrait. It's animals in my life done in paper cut. <laughs> wow. Um, and then this is uh, from Nancy and Sienna, um, which is a comic that I did with um, my Natalie when she was seven or eight. And she would design the characters and, and come up with a story and uh, uh, I would do most of the artwork. Um, part of what happened with Nancy and Sienna stories is they, their word balloons had images in them and sometimes they would, within that they would talk. And so you're kind of constantly trying to puzzle through what, what's actually happening. <laughs> um, wow. And I think that as a through line is probably the biggest thing for me is I like the puzzle, <laughs> trying to figure out what, what this world is that I'm dealing with and what, uh, what medium works well for it and how do you put it all together. And I have one last picture. This is from way back in college. This is a set design that I did for Midsummer Night's Dream. And I put it in here not because it was a particularly great design, but it. But what we did was we used real grass, and this was in a theater that was down in a basement. And to get there, you had to go through this whole huge theater complex and down around through winding through all of these basement hallways. And eventually, you opened the door, and before you even got in the theater, you were hit with the smell of the grass, and and you were uh, kind of struck by. Um, the dew, you could feel it on your skin, and you were instantly transported to another world. So other creating worlds is 
really what fascinates me. And how do you take all of the information that are part of that world and put that into something? Okay. So you, you're definitely making a very good case yeah. for uh, adapting your style to fit the particular project and give yeah. the project what it means. It's basically like uh, Ringo, Ringo Starr used to do with his drumming for the Beatles. Yeah. I like it. I yeah, like me it. and Ringo Starr, we're, we're like that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I, I could see the connection. Uh, John, how about you? Um, for me, uh, you know, as far as illustrating, like when it comes to the movie posters, you know, it's, it's kind of trying to do what hasn't been done before, you know, so we're trying to kind of interpret that movie poster in a, in a, in a certain way that's, that's different and appealing to the audiences. So I try to really adapt my style to the movie poster. And after a couple of years of doing them, me and my buddy, Jeremy, like we wanted to kind of push that a little further as far as the actual physical product. So as far as being a chameleon, it, it, I guess in a sense, like we try to do stuff with screen printing and push those limits to do something different than just your regular print on paper. You know, so we started using metallic paper, like on Blade Runner, we use metal, I use metallic paper. So, you know, the kind of eyes would shimmer or, you know, I've done stuff on hologram paper, glow in the dark ink, that sort of thing. So kind of that more visceral, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of effect you know so uh so yeah definitely it's an evolving thing you know we have to keep changing and growing with it um and and just trying to take this like beloved movie that people love and try to honor it but at the same time incorporate your style but at the same time push the limits so it's it's a lot yeah it's, a, it's intimidating okay so it's like, so like pushing the boundaries almost becomes part of your style yeah, and I don't I don't know if we were doing a share screen portion now. I do have some pictures of like the glow and the metallic, if that's something I should show now or uh, it... sure. Okay. So let me uh do that real quick. One second. Okay, can you all see? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's the Blade Runner poster um, that I was speaking about. Uh, this is Goonies, and if you look in the bottom corners, you'll see the Bubonicon Presents logo. So all of these posters were sponsored by Bubonicon at the Guild. So yeah. Craig and Jessica were always in attendance with free goodies and gifts. Um, and I'm not really a public speaker, so Craig usually, usually speaks for me. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. Um, this is the Labyrinth poster we did for them. And again, these are all uh, movies that that uh, Bubonicon brought to the theater. So uh, this was one of the more recent ones that that they brought, Poltergeist. And this one actually, I can show you later, has metallic ink on it. This was one of the first ones Bubonicon did. It was the Star Trek IV. And Big Trouble in Little China. This one glows in the dark. Uh, this one's all metallic ink on black paper. It's hard to see digitally, but. And this was a piece I did for uh, for the Bubonicon uh, program. <laughs> and then this was a Women of Wonder I did for uh, Bubonicon 47 a couple years back. So yeah, here's just what I was talking about with the screen printing. So the Poltergeist poster, it's a black metallic ink called Black Pearl. So in certain angles, you don't see it at all. But once you move it back and forth, that shimmer kind of reveals the image. Oh, wow. And then uh, below that, you see Rachel, that's the silver paper. So when you move back and forth, her eyes would shimmer as well. And this is a look like a Ghostbusters, just in regular light. And then I use glow in the dark ink and neon ink. So you see it with a black light on the left. And then the right is purely in the dark after it's done. And then that's this so is cool. The last one is <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Thank you. The last one's a hologram paper uh, that was jamming the hologram. So I, first time printing on hologram paper. It's not easy. I had to completely kind of secure it with a, a, an acrylic finish over the whole entire thing because it was kind of chipped, ink was chipping off uh, the hologram paper because it's so slick. And then below that is back to our roots of the gig poster. I did a, a Bowie tribute show just this past January and that was a glow in the dark, or not, not glow in the dark, a black light poster. So it was neon ink. It doesn't actually glow. But. Very cool. Uh, so that's just kind of a look at the 
what we try to do with screen printing. It's, oh, it's that's fun. awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's so, really cool. It's a lot of work, but yeah, we just try to push the limits and, and, uh, and as you might imagine, you know, there's, there, there aren't movies right now. We had some lined up, uh, Hedwig and the Angry Inch, Jurassic Park, uh, from dusk till dawn, but th those are just on hold. So we're just going to see what happens. You know, we're just, they're, they are drawn and ready to print. We're just, we're just waiting. So I get it. I yeah. get it. Right on. You guys are showing some really good stuff. Um, Elizabeth. Um, so what about you? Is it better to be distinctive or to be a chameleon when it comes to your art? Uh, for me, um, if I'm doing it for, for rent, <laughs> um, it's better for me to have a voice that they can trust is going to be that voice all the way through the process. If I'm doing for me, then I can play. Um, I did, um, about seven years ago. Wow. Has it really been that long? Um, I did a tarot deck and because I never expected it to finish, it was a project. Um, I had no, I had no prospects of making cash out of it. <laughs> I got to play with a lot of different styles. Um, and it was really nice to, once they were all done to lay them out and find the pieces that were more me um, that were more styles that I felt were more genuine, were more authentically what I wanted to say in my voice. Um, but since most of my life right now is rent work, <laughs> um, I like to be completely honest with people what my strengths and what my weaknesses are. And I can't chameleon into doing spacecraft because they don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my space material does it no <laughs> um and if you want action from me give me a couple extra weeks <laughs> um but i do my uh my voice is creating characters that you can have conversations with um that look like individuals that could step out and you could have a chat, have coffee. Um, and so um, I know that's where my, that's where my voice is and me playing chameleon. Let's not do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So, all right, here's, here's a question for everyone. Um, how long did it take for you to, um, if you have a unique style or at least a, a very unique way of working that works really well for you, a style that you are known for, how long did it take for you to actually uh, develop that? And I'll start again with Betsy. Um, I'm trying to think whether I consciously developed a style. I, when I look at, um, casual drawings that I did in high school, even they are recognizably mine. It's my hand. Um, Elizabeth is nodding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think you sort of, you draw with your body mind. And so it tends to be that even whether you're being a chameleon or you're adapting to a particular project or an art director. And I almost think that the most of us of necessity have adapted um, for me from editorial to right through to fine art, which is what I do most now is actually paintings. Um, <clears throat> but they're very obviously Betsy paintings. <laughs> okay. It's hard. So, so pretty much just since high school, you've just kind of been developing since then for the most yeah. part. Um, yeah, I think it's very hard. That the point I was trying to make earlier is it's hard not to look like oneself. It's hard not to your voice to be recognizable. And it may be that people, it seems to me that people worry a little bit too much about consciously developing a style rather than just letting how, how they naturally work reveal itself. 
Does that make sense? Elizabeth, you're nodding. Yeah. No, no, that makes perfect sense, I think. Um, so Jeff, to you, um, you can you can reframe the question how you wish, but yeah. how did uh, you develop your your uh, your art to to be able to be recognized as hey this is this is Jeff's work? Um, I think I think it always for me just comes back to to asking questions um, and especially with theater. I mean, you, as a, if I'm working as a designer, I'll always, or however, whatever job I've got in the theater, I'm, I'll, I'll ask questions. And, and um, because that's such a collaborative art. Um, but, but a lot of the questions I ask are not questions that other people would normally ask. Mm -hmm. And I've constantly run into that over the years. And I'm just asking the questions that make sense to me. To ask, um, and yeah, Betsy, did you? Can you, can you give an example? Um, got, let's I'm see. Sure, now also. So there was a show that I did that uh, took place in the trailer park, and there was it was about this young girl who was having trouble with her family, and she had a secret space out in the desert that she would go to and do these rituals that that helped her, and. So I asked to, to talk to her about what her thought process was for um, dealing with those rituals so that I could create a space that worked for her. And it completely freaked her out. She was, I think she was like 22 years old. She'd been a professional actress since she was like two. And she had never had anybody ask her anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, somebody, you know, if she had encountered that before, it would have been, they just gave her something and she had to figure out how to make it work. Um, but I do that with my comics and with everything else that I do too. I, but, but, uh, a lot of it is more asking myself questions. Mm -hmm. Um, so, mm. yeah. Yeah. Kind of Add, I would say that you're you're spot on in that, <clears throat> excuse me, speculative fiction, which is a term that I prefer to science fiction, fantasy, whatever, because it's broader. That speculative, the business of speculative fiction in art or writing is asking the questions that are slightly. Right. Yeah. Out. They say, I would never have thought to ask that, but it opens up another universe yeah 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 uh, with theater you don't often get to do straight fantasy or science fiction sure. but but on another level all theater is fantasy mm -hmm. and that's what interests me you know? yeah or surreal surreality yeah yeah but you're still creating something that is that is not uh reality yeah exactly yeah i like it uh, John, what do you think? Um, as far as like a signature style, uh, I will say like in my art journey, you know, I, I've been illustrating since I was young, um, always influenced by like, you know, science fiction, horror comics, pop art, everything in between. Um, I will say like there were phases in my life where I definitely had kind of imposter syndrome, you know, like I didn't whether that was, you know, creating a movie poster, a gig poster, or more recently, like, you know, working on a comic, um, I, I would find myself over time trying to like study other artists and, and not mimic them, but just, I don't know what the word is, but you're just trying to, I mean, you, you want that influence, but, um, you know, your head can get kind of clouded in, in different styles, you know, like, well, why can't I do that? Or I wish my work worked more this way or, you know, I, or looking at a piece of art, I could never do that, you know, and there, there's insecurities there as well, you know, so imposter syndrome is rough, but um, I got some great advice a couple years ago from a, a, a comic artist friend of mine, he knows who he is, um, he, he just told me, John, just, just do you, like be you, your style will come through no matter what it is, just, just, just do you, you know, and, um, and, and it does in the end, you know, I've been told, whether it's, 
you know, kind of comic stuff or the movie posters, or I do a lot of traditional artwork for um, Spanish market or Hispanic market in Santa Fe. Um, but it is still all my style. So I, I, I've, I've, I've tried to just kind of listen to my heart and just be myself, you know, and, and kind of try to tune out the static if I could, because there, there was a while there where I was in my younger days trying to rush to not copy these artists, but just kind of like mimic them if I could, you know, and just, uh, so I, I just try to borrow those influences where I can and, and not be too hard on myself. And that's really helped me be more with, secure with what I, with what I draw and just, and just be myself, you know, being an artist is rough. It's, you're putting yourself out there to the public, you know, it's, uh, you're very vulnerable. It's, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> that's what I hear. <laughs> uh, I get it, um, Elizabeth. Um, I I I have to bring something up from from uh, what uh, he was saying about <clears throat> you know you you start you start by trying to uh, learn other people's styles and so forth and I was the token girl in our D and D group for when I was a teenager. <laughs> And so because I was a girl, they were like, you can draw all the characters. <laughs> 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 and so I had how to draw the Marvel way on one side and the D&D book on the other. And everybody looked like Aquaman for a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I started finding that I had um things that i do very very well um i do fabric very 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 well um i do symbology very well i like to hide symbols into my pieces and i like being true to um the stories that they add to the story so um and one of these days I will take my pieces and go, and this one, 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 and this one. Um, <laughs> but um, I didn't realize that I had um, a particular voice until I laid out all the pieces together and discovered that my voice was actually a color palette. Mm. <laughs> um, and I'd never seen it all together. And then I was like, oh, look, autumn. <laughs> <laughs> um but some of my very favorite artists you can identify them from a distance um if you see stephanie law's work you can identify from a distance um and i love being able to have surprises in my own work going oh i didn't realize that was my voice that's kind of cool <laughs> um and I love being able to see it in other people's. When I get to see uh, where their, their, their voice starts to sing a really beautiful harmony, and you're like, oh, do that more often, because that was very cool. Do more of that. Um, so did I answer the question? <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, you you guys have you guys have expressed uh, answered the question in your own ways, which is good. <laughs> but you are artists, so that's cool. Um, my whole thing. As long as you guys are telling interesting interesting stories, that's cool. So um, it inspired me actually to ask you guys, um, as we are in the pandemic and as we are going through the COVID nineteen, you know, um, year as it were. Um, and I know this is also about developing your own style and things like that, but we are now kind of more isolated than we have been. So has that inspired you guys to, um, maybe try to do something more with your art that you didn't do before the pandemic or whether it's made you kind of really want to just tighten tighten up your what you're doing to to try to just kind of stick with what you're doing you know in light of everything else that's going on as a as a form of i guess stability so uh uh jeff we'll start with you and i'll just kind of bounce around a little bit 
Um, I guess I've, I've been uh, thankful for the extra time I've gotten. <laughs> and I have really tried to, um, I've always got a list of things that I never get to because there's always other things that have to get done first. And, and I've been really appreciative to have the opportunity to, to try and get some of that stuff done, both on the creative side and the business side. I've been actually getting stuff out to publishers better than I ever have, which is still not great, but <laughs> better than I ever have before. Okay. So, so have you had, have you had any time to experiment with something new or are you just basically sticking to your stuff and getting um, it out there at a better rate? I'm working on projects that I've, that I've been trying to get done for a long time and they all have their own experiments within them. Okay, cool. Cool. Hey, nothing wrong with that. That's, that's great. Um, Betsy, how about you? Um, I think in general, freelance artists and writers have had it easier because we're used to working alone. It, sort of justifies that position in a way. Um, if you can't adapt to that, it's, it's pretty hard to be um, a writer, a freelance writer or an illustrator. Um, I was trying to bring up an image screen share. I'm not sure how well this is gonna do. Let, bear with me if I can't seem to get a full screen, but... Um, Ooh. Yeah, um, as I say these days, I'm painting as much as I am illustrating. And um, this is a, a COVID, a COVID Corvid right there. So, <laughs> but I've been doing my, <clears throat> my paintings that already have a very surreal edge to them. And I'm finding that um, the isolation has probably added to that edge. That's, I think, the biggest thing. Plus, I, um, I teach at the university. I teach uh, in the Honors College a workshop in speculative fiction. And it's very interesting to see, and I, which has an art wing to it. And it's been very, very interesting to see what's coming out from the students in response to the quarantine and the isolation. So nice. there's, a gener there's a generation coming up that's kind of branded by this event. I'm getting light from the, the sky right here. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like you were being touched by the gods. <laughs> I, I was paying, I, we were all paying extra attention to you because obviously, you know, you've got the spotlight. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on the verge of being abducted. It, it always, <laughs> well, it is New Mexico, so. Yeah. Um, all right, Elizabeth, how about you? Uh, well, to be completely honest. Um, yes, always aside, be honest. <laughs> aside from, um, I got, I was really, really fortunate. And because she's told the world, I can tell the world. Um, I am doing uh, two sets of covers uh, for two different series for Melinda Snodgrass. Ooh. And I'm up to my eyeballs in rent work <laughs> right now. Um, and for this, I'm grateful because the, the Beth voice ran away <laughs> and has been gone because the whole pandemic thing just hit, just like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> um, but it's, it's funny that you should bring this up now because it's, um, I just finished reading um, A Kata Witch and A Kata Warrior from Nettie Akorafor. And something about it woke up the muse. And I'm delighted to have her back because she's been gone for nearly eight months now. <laughs> wow. 
Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to finding out what that looks like. Um, and I'm in the process of starting the initial sketchworks and the initial designs. And wow, she has some, sometimes you just have to go to um, another art form to try to wake up your own. Um, so, um, but, but up until like last week, I was not interested in doing anything that had anything to do with my heart. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Uh, John, how about you? Well, uh, you know, this time being spent at home, uh, I also work from home. I work for you, for the university as well. Um, I work with honors college too, Betsy. So, um, yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I work with them a lot. Um, so once we're all on campus, we can like, whenever that happens, you can say hi. But uh, yeah, so um, the, the book I'm working on with with uh, with John Miller, it, that's this this kind of time at home has really like I've really pushed forward on it, you know. So I've I've got a lot more done because you I'm just always home, you know, and it and that's a good thing. But but aside from that, which is positive. Um, also, I've been trying to educate myself because you never should stop learning. So uh, you're taking some uh, Udemy courses, reading some books, just trying to up the techniques where I, where I can and stuff. Uh, just try to keep learning and growing. Um, every Friday, uh, me and some, some artist buddies of mine, we have a kind of a Zoom uh, meetup and we just draw. It's like a one or two hour draw session and we just, just talk just draw and hang out so that's that's been really helpful we do that every friday so very cool new normal but it it helps so right on yeah right on i i i i resent the fact that even though i'm an introvert i can't go out when i want to <laughs> that's the thing it's like most of the time i'd probably still be at home but if i want to go do something if i want to <laughs> take my wife somewhere else <laughs> as opposed to having things delivered yeah that would be nice so okay last question i guess before we hopefully take questions from um everyone else um is uh, i guess just really briefly what advice would you give to artists starting out that really want to have their own signature style or at least really want to stand out in the industry whatever industry they're in so that people can know them by their work. So Elizabeth, we'll start with you. Um, well, that's very much a two, two direction question. Um, if you are trying to find your audience, um, start finding uh, artists and writers that echo, um, that um, have similarities to yours that your your voice harmonizes with theirs um, and there are some artists that should stay away from fiction they should should stay in uh, nonfiction their their work is stronger for it um, there are artists that should <clears throat> stay with galleries because gallery work does not work well for for book covers. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, but if you are trying to find, um, uh, how to make, can you say the question again? Cause I yeah, have not tracked. Oh, no worries. Uh, so what advice would you give to artists that, that are starting out that really want to have their own signature style? Basically. Uh, start finding out what, uh, what similarities each of your pieces have uh, and be rather brutal with yourself. Um, and just like, you know, don't give me spaceships. Um, know what you can do and know what you can't do. Um, and accept criticism with grace um, because most of the people in this business are grok being artists and are not going to blow wind up your tuchus. Um, and so listen, 
Um, and don't go with your heart on your sleeve. Go with your, your, go with an empty cup and find out what they have to say. Does that help? Art, yeah, it does. I had an art teacher that told, that told me to accept criticism as if my wallet was empty. <laughs> <laughs> Which it probably was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I was like, ah, yes. Oh. <laughs> In there, so yeah. <laughs> I found that to be really good advice. I keep it to this day. John, how about you? Um, developing signature style. Uh, kind of what Elizabeth was saying as far as like the, the, the criticisms and critiques. I mean, you know, definitely, like you said, take them with grace, but I, it, it is difficult. It, it, it's hard to hear that, you know, especially coming up when you're starting out. Um, I had a professor in college who taught me screen printing, actually. Uh, he, he was rough, you know, people would cry in class. I mean, it, it was, it was a, <laughs> he was rough, but I mean, but it was good. You know, it was really, it was really solid advice. Um, you know, I, I really, I really looked up to him and, uh, and he didn't, what did you say? Blow smoke up your tuchus? Is that the, the term? <laughs> yeah, smoke, no, he, sunshine, wind. <laughs> no rainbows there. No, but that was great. No, that was great. It's it's the harsh truth, but that just, you know, you take from that and you learn and you push forward and, and that's that's how you grow. So um, like I said, you never stop learning either. You know, I, I just, uh, you know, like I, I'm, I'm sitting here watching tutorials at any time I can. Um, but yeah, I think to, to, to get to that signature style, definitely listen to your critics, um, learn from your mistakes, and that's how you will grow. It's rough, but if you want it, you got you to gotta keep going forward. That is excellent advice. Uh, Jeff, how about you? Yeah, um, I think I would just echo everything that you, you two have said. Um, yeah, listen, listen to the criticisms and, and uh, see if you can figure out the puzzle of how they fit in there. <laughs> um, but still, but still follow what really fascinates you, what, whatever drives you. Try and try and listen to that too. Yeah. And if there's... Cool. Criticism you don't agree with. See if you can overcome it. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a process too to figure out what critique to listen to and what not. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes too, early on in your career, you might get critiques that you don't really know what to do with. And then a few years later you're like, oh, that's what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sometimes yeah. you get the critique and you're not ready for it. Yeah. I had a, a painting professor in college that gave me advice and 10, 15 years later, I went, Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> By which time he was dead, right? <laughs> no, he's still around. <laughs> <laughs> you want to, you want to hook up, hook up with him again, just so he could say, I told you so. <laughs> I get it. Betsy, how about you? You know, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been sitting here feeling embarrassed because I really don't have, <laughs> I never worried about it, particularly. I didn't go to art school. I'm self-taught. It was, I started out as a scientific illustrator, drawing mayfly genitalia. Get that. Huh. And, um, I bet no one could critique you on that. No. <laughs> it was less interesting than you think, but um, <laughs> there was a lot of critique, but I, I was sort of in, in most cases responding to the, to the job and scrambling job to job and, and trying to please a whole bunch of people and that, and, and maintain myself at the same time. And that tends to sort of shake things down, I think. I'm feeling envious of those of you who did go to art school and get asked, got asked more interesting, more weirder questions than I was asked. I was asked industry questions, pretty much. 
Yeah. Well, well I, I bet you saved yourself a lot of money though. I <laughs> art, art school is, yeah, it's completely overrated. Trust I me. I, I have, went to art Institute and it's, yeah. I have three PhDs in the school of hard knocks. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is the only education you need. Yeah. It's a hard one though. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. They don't call it hard knocks for nothing. Um, so, uh, Bubonicon overlords, do we have any questions from from <laughs> anyone in the audience? Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> uh, we have a question is, what is the one thing you all miss right now because of COVID? Oh. Mm. Artistically uh, or in general? I think either is fine. Uh, Ashby said both, both. Uh, I am, I would love to have dinner with a plate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> I would like are, are you to... saying you don't use plates at home, Beth? Oh, well, no, I mean, it's, I would like to, I would like to have a dinner that's an event that I didn't have to cook. Ah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, like, I've been to your house. I know you have plates. I've seen them. <laughs> I miss uh, the hugs. Hmm? I miss the hugs. Mm, oh, hugs. Yes. <laughs> I've heard about those. What are those like? <laughs> <laughs> I used to know what they were. I don't remember them. <laughs> seeing, uh, seeing all my neighbors' faces, you know, just mm. taking the morning walk without walking you know, getting 30 feet out the door and going, oh my God, I forgot my mask and, you know, <laughs> putting, and just not seeing people's faces, their emotions, what shows on their faces. Mm -hmm. so. I miss events like Rubanicon or any Comic Cons that, yeah. that, me, that me and Jeremy do because you meet so many amazing people and, and just that interaction with people, you know, and, and not to plug the Guild again, but I'm, I miss theaters. Like I would love to go to the Guild, watch a midnight movie with a big old bucket of butter popcorn. I still haven't gotten over the sorrow of losing Spectrum. <laughs> I, I, I still have tears for that. <laughs> that would have been fun. Um, Jeff, did you? Oh, you said you missed hugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think I miss I miss having just my normal life. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that struck me, I think, and I'll make this really really brief. I'm the moderator, so I don't I don't I shouldn't talk very much, but. Um, I, I, I miss not judging people as far as the kind of people they are, whether or not they are wearing a mask when I see them in public, because if they're not wearing a mask, I immediately think negative things about them, even though I don't know anything about them. And I don't like that. And I, I miss not having to worry about it. I would like for us to get back to a point where we don't have to wear masks anymore. So, yeah. yeah. Um, next question, please. Um, if uh, what what artists out there uh, should would you say that uh, I'm sorry I'm not wording this properly uh, should we be aware of that you would like to to give a like shout out to are there artists that you like respect or people you feel like um, most of us aren't aware of or things like that are we talking about up and comers or are we talking about people that we just think are cool either one. Um, an up and comer that's doing very, very well is Tommy Arnold. Um, he did the cover for um, uh, Gideon the Ninth and Harold the Ninth. Um, he's also going to be the cover for, for Spectrum, I think. Um, so he's a voice to look for. Um, as far as artists to check out, I'm always going to mention Stephanie Law because, oh my goodness. Oh, she's <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, John, how about you? Um, artists. Uh, well, I, I guess I should probably, uh, my, my, my buddy, Jeremy, he, the, 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 my friend that does the movie posters with me, he'd probably kill me if I didn't say something, but he's the other half. So, he does movie posters. He's pretty awesome. Uh, we've, we've we've been friends now for 
couple decades, we met at the journal. We used to do Sharpie murals in our department and get in trouble for it. We weren't working and now we're doing posters and it's super fun. So Jeremy's awesome, Jeremy Montoya. And it's another shout out to Chuck Lawrence. I mean, everyone knows Chuck and I love Chuck and I think he's probably watching and he's just so supportive of the arts in general. You know, he's, he's just a supportive person and we love Chuck. So that's who I'd like to shout out to. Hi, Chuck. Oh, I'll say hi to Chuck, too. <laughs> Chuck, too. Right? Yeah, yeah um, I'm with 7000 BC, uh, which is the uh, nonprofit comic group. Um, we're we're a arts or, nonprofit arts organization that does a lot of educational stuff, but we also are all comic makers. And Chuck was our president for Yay. several years. Um, and I had, I had uh, suggested we ha we bring him in as president because he is such a great supporter of the arts. Um, but for me, honestly, I think uh, I spend at least as much time thinking about the work of the people I know locally, like John, <laughs> um, as I do uh, any other national artists. You know. Um, Very cool. And just the, just seeing what they're working on and, and how they're handling the, the issues that they deal with. Very nice. Always support local. Uh, Betsy, how about you? Oh, um, Australian Aboriginal art. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I just go back to that and back to that and back to that. Can't, can't suck it dry. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. I think for me, um, because I, I have always been such a huge fan of Art Nouveau, um, I, 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 I go back and I, I begin to rediscover a lot of the older artists. Um, obviously, Alphonse Musha is, I, I kneel at his altar whenever possible. Um, Prague would be my Mecca. Um, but there's also uh, artists um, just from that era. Um, the gentleman that uh, there's a gentleman named Walter Crane, whose art is fantastic. There's Charles Robinson, um, and these guys are long, long gone, but their art is still incredibly inspiring. Uh, the gentleman who did um, Little Nemo, I, I the name just I forgot the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walter yeah. McKay. Yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, his stuff is really, really amazing. Um, there's Ivan Bilibin, a uh, Russian artist mm -hmm. uh, from back, way, way back in the day, you know, the late 1800s. Um, and those guys are still providing me with a lot of inspiration. Someone who's a little bit more contemporary uh, would be Jim Fitzpatrick, uh, an Irish artist who did Art Nouveau in the 60s, late 60s and 70s. He did a lot of Thin Lizzy posters and album covers. Um, but his art is amazing. If you like Celtic knot work, his art is just uh, it's incredible. So, yeah, those would be my my go tos. So. Well, thank you, everyone. I think we are out of time. Uh, I did want to take a moment to say that if you go to our website, um, particularly the art show page, there is a list of um, a lot of our normal artists and their work uh, and ways you can support them because we're really sad we can't have an actual art show this year. Uh, but uh, we're doing what we can to help support uh, all of you guys uh, virtually. So please go check that out. Um, thank you, panelists. And hopefully we can see you next year at uh, physical Bubonicon if everything goes according to <laughs> some sort of good plan and 2021 yeah, yeah. is better than 2020. Um, and then I hope everyone sticks around for our science talk next. So thanks guys. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Bye. Awesome panel. Bye.